Hey, William Gilmore here for the ScreenwritersJourney.com, and it is day 291 of the journey in season two. And it's been about uh, six weeks, I guess, since my last blog update, and a lot has happened in that time. Uh, most notably, I did the Dances with Films Film Festival at the Chinese Theater here in Hollywood, and I was sort of a field producer, shooter, editor, graphics, you name it, we did a little bit of everything. Uh, there was a lot of time spent on the red carpet doing interviews with filmmakers, uh, covering the Q&As, panel sessions, nightly entertainment, uh, and I got to uh, do a series of hyperlapses and time lapses of the event, uh, which were a big hit with filmmakers. Uh, it was 11 days of just lots and lots of work. I mean, literally ran from one event to the next, to the next, to the next, trying to cover everything and get coverage. And then we did uh, daily packages, uh, did a highlight reel, a spotlight on filmmakers, did a trivia question, did a sponsor reel. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, and I got some good information uh, from that uh, event uh, going to the, uh, since I was there shooting the panels, I got to hear everything and got some really good information. And that's what I wanted to uh, sort of catch everybody up on. But something else has happened uh, since that event ended. And I wanted to talk about that. And I'll get to the other stuff that's happened uh, in the subsequent uh, blogs. But today I received a letter from one of the companies, if you may recall, that I did a query blast for Nowhere to Run, uh, which is the uh, sort of action thriller about the drug dealer who loses his stash and his cash to three redneck friends and has 24 hours to get it back or suffer the consequences from a corrupt sheriff. Anyway. Uh, I had tried to do a series of query letters last fall uh, using the screenwriter's directory from the writer's store, and that wasn't proving to be very effective. It's very time-consuming, very tedious, and not getting really any reaction. I'd say over 50% of the uh, queries that I sent out came back uh, as the email address was wrong or the person no longer worked for that company. So there was a lot of bad information in that directory. Uh, which, to a degree, is sort of understandable because there is a lot of turnover in the industry, people changing jobs, moving from one company to another. So, even as, as up to date as, as direct, they try to make the director, they still need lead time to gather all the information, vet it, and then publish it, and get it out there into the hands of screenwriters. And in that ensuing time, things change. But it was a, it was a huge amount of, of wrong addresses people who no longer work at certain companies, uh, that made it almost futile to go through the process of trying to find the right uh, companies that would be interested in, in that particular script. Uh, because you have to go through, I mean, it's, the director is this thick, and there are listings for you know agents and managers and production companies and directors, and you have to go through all of them, and some of them will take uh, work from unrepresented writers, or they'll take work from an up, unrepresented writer, unrepresented writer, unrepresented, unrepresented what, writer, blah, tough to say, uh, who's had a feature produced previously, things like that. So you got to kind of identify who's looking for what, who, what they're willing to accept. Do they take snail mail? Or do they take an email query? Uh, all those kinds of things. Will they take a script? Do we just send them a script directly? Uh, so once you, you go through all that, you've spent even more time, which allows more people to change jobs. Um, it was really tedious and not very productive. So I kind of gave up on that after about 200 letters. Um, but then I had uh, an acquaintance that I know through one of the uh, screenwriting forums on Facebook said he had used a uh, blast service, which basically will hit everybody in the industry for you for a fee, send your query letter out. And he actually sold his first script that way. So I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a try. And I used the company that he used, which was scriptdelivery.net. And I went for the, the big package, 90 bucks, 9,200 uh, submissions uh, around the industry. Uh, they could be anywhere. They could be in the UK. They could be in Denver, Colorado. They could be here in LA. They're all over the place. So... Uh, I did that, and almost immediately I started getting responses. Not the kind of responses I wanted. 
they weren't flat out rejections, uh, but it was a lot of this person no longer works at this company. And the majority of them, I got about 300 responses, I'm guessing. And the majority of them were uh, that they didn't accept materials, uh, that you had to submit a query letter. I'm like, did you not read my letter? There was nothing attached. There was no materials submitted. It was a query letter. Um, so I wasn't sure how to respond to that. Um, so out of 9,200 submissions, about 300 responses, um, and close to, I'd say probably 250 uh, of those responses were, you know, we don't accept uh, submitted materials, you have to do a query letter. So that raised an eyebrow or two. Uh, you spend that kind of money and get that kind of response. Uh, it wasn't a lot of money, it was only 90 bucks. Um, but it made me question the service a little. And, uh, but I did get seven requests for the script. So there were uh, seven people interested. Like, yay, you know, that's more, that's seven more than I got on my own. So it seemed like maybe it was a well-placed 90 bucks. So I sent the script out, and uh, I've gotten one rejection so far. They said, you know, not right for us. Uh, and the others I haven't heard back from yet. I'll be following up with them shortly. But today I got another letter from a producer who liked the script. Not bad. Good effort. That's at least how he put it. However, they were leery of taking the script on because there were some major mistakes. Not in the script itself, not in the story, but in the formatting. Now, I've talked about formatting before. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good at formatting. Uh, all my coverage that I've gotten when I've sent the script out, has rated the coverage very, very high. I get great comments uh, about my my uh, formatting in the workshops that I go to. So I wasn't too terribly concerned about my formatting when I sent the script out. So, of course, immediate panic. It's like, oh, my God, what did I do wrong? And he didn't want to go into too many specifics about the formatting uh, because he said, I could just tell you and you could change them. He goes, but then without mentoring you would probably just make those same mistakes again in a rewrite. So before we give you the specifics, you need to go through some mentoring. Okay, so we got John Trotter's Screenwriter's Bible right here uh, on my, uh, my desk, so I can refer to it frequently. Uh, but they did give me a sort of a hint about what the problems were, and their biggest concerns were long line length and improper use of parentheticals. Okay, let's look at the parentheticals, because I don't think I have that many in the script. I tried to, to, to limit those. And I went through the entire script, and I have about 30 in a 104-page script, 30 parentheticals. And the 10 of those are language uh, clarification. Some of the characters speak in Spanish in this particular script. So after their name, you put in the parentheses in Spanish. So that the reader knows that this line is supposed to be spoken in Spanish. It's written in English, so the reader, who is probably English speaking, will understand what's being said. And then if the, uh, the filmmakers want to subtitle that line, The audience can figure out what's being said by the response to that line, if it's in English. Or sometimes you don't want them to know uh, what exactly is being said. But the industry standard is you identify, you write the line in English and you identify it in parentheses, in a parenthetical element, uh, stating what the language is. So a third of my parentheses, my parenthetical elements, were that, were language clarification, completely in industry standard. So, I'm not concerned about that. Uh, another 10 were uh, clarification about who a line was being delivered to. You know, Shep is arguing between uh, Tyler and Grady, and they're going back and forth, back and forth, and he has an insult. And that insult is not directed to Grady, it's directed to Tyler. You want to clarify just so they know, you know in that rapid fire dialogue that this line is meant to be a jab at Tyler. Uh, again, industry standard, that's how it's done. So two-thirds of my, my 
Parenthetical elements are industry standard. So what is the problem? Not quite sure. But those last 10 uh, were line reading directions. Uh, laughing, sarcastic, things like that that indicate to the actor how the line should be read. Now there is a philosophy that you shouldn't give any of those to the actor. You're giving directions to the actor and it's not your place to do it. And of course, if you've been following me at all, you know my feeling on that is it's your script, it's your story. Until someone buys it, you can do what you want with it. Um, because the actor certainly has no obligation to follow what you've stated that you would like to see. You're simply saying, this is how I see the line being done. The actor working with the director uh, may come up with a different uh, reading based on how they're doing the film. Uh, and I have no problems with them changing that, but for clarification and reading purposes, you know, sometimes uh, you, you want to, to clarify. I do try to write my lines in such a way that it's obvious, but sometimes you're making a point or you're wanting to do something that's opposite of what would be you know, normally readily understandable uh, because you're trying to do something subtext or some reason like that. So in a 104-page script, I had 10 parentheticals uh, in that manner. 10. That's like one for every 10 and a half pages. Is he seriously going to reject a script for that? A script that he gave no indication that there's a problem with story or characters or structure or plot holes? Nothing. Just that there were ten parentheticals that he didn't like. Any producer worth his salt, if he finds a good script, is not going to reject that, that, that story because the screenwriter chose to put in a couple of parentheticals. A couple. It's not like, you know, they're, they're streaming through the whole thing. Uh, because they can easily be rectified. The simple couple strokes of the delete key. So, I question that. Um, and the reason I really question it, I'll get to in a second. But he had one other point, uh, and that was that there was improper scene endings. And I, I'm not... The scene ends. What, what, what's improper about that? If it's over, you go to the next scene. You know, there's a slug line, interior, Jesse's house, day. And the next scene starts. Uh, so I'm not sure what that was about, unless he's referring to transitional elements, such as cut to, fade out, fade in, dissolve to, wipe to, smash cut, things like that, uh, which I don't have any of. Not a single one of those in the script. Those are a big no-no. Those are not industry standard anymore. They are still used for TV shows, uh, particularly for uh, comedy uh, series, uh, but not used in screenplay formats anymore. So if he's expecting to see those and I'm not using those, then he's definitely not up to date on format. Uh, so uh, my question is, well, what, what is it exactly he's looking for? But here's where we get to the gist of it. He is willing for a small fee to mentor me and explain to me how format is. And after I've been mentored and then rewrite the script, taking care of these formatting issues, he would like to reconsider the script for production. Scam, scam, scam. Uh, anytime a producer is asking you for money in order to consider your script, it's a scam. They're not really interested. Um, and it's just amazing to me that, that this is even a scam, that anybody would fall for this. Except that there probably are uh, young or newbie writers out there who are gullible and stars in their eyes. Somebody's interested in my script, and all I have to do is you know, go through a mentoring process where I will get to learn more. Well, you can learn just about everything you need to do by picking up either the Screenwriter's Bible or uh, Cut To by uh, T.J. Alex. The idea that, that people exist that get people prey on, on screenwriters like that is astounding to me. Uh, and that people actually fall for that. You know, that's like getting you know, a letter from a prince of Nigeria. It's not going to happen. They're dangling this carrot in front of you, saying, please, please, you know, give us some money. And the screen just changed colors. I'm not sure why. Lean out. Maybe it'll come back. No, I just went from warm colors to blue colors. Don't know why that happened. Anyway. Um, I did post about this on uh, one of the Facebook forums, and most people 
uh, were supportive of me, although it was obvious they did not really read my posts because they're like, oh my God, you're being scammed, dude. Run away. Don't send him any money. It's like, that's, that's what I said in the first statement. I was, someone tried to scam me today and I ended the piece with, you know, I will be moving on without him. And I was like, don't do anything. <laughs> don't, don't give this guy your money. Which I appreciate the advice, but I would like to they had actually read the, the post uh, in its entirety uh, or had a little better reading comprehension or something. But a couple of people were like, oh, this is bullshit, man. You're making this up. You're a liar. This didn't really happen. Um, and I can't understand why people would react that way. Uh, they think I'm just trying to get attention or something. Uh, I don't need that kind of attention. I think. Here's some advice. If someone offers to look at your script, if you pay them, they're probably not really interested in, in your script. They're interested in your pocketbook. So, don't do it. Anyway, that's what I have. That had me aggravated all day. Uh, I can think about you know, some guy passing himself off as, as a producer uh, and trying to get money out of streamers. Irritating. Watch out for it. They're everywhere. Um, but it also made me sort of question, excuse me, sort of spit a peanut up. Uh, question the idea of these blast services that do these uh, email queries because this guy I was obviously on their list. Um, he's a scam. Um, a lot of the people who got the, the, the query letter rejected it because they thought it was uh, material submission, so they weren't reading the letters. So the query service may not be a, a scam in itself because they're, they're doing exactly what they said they would do, but how worthwhile is that service? Uh, so I question that. Um, if you're going, if you're thinking about doing a query service, it may not be the best thing. Although this one screenwriter I know did make his first sale that way. Uh, so it's kind of like going to Vegas and spinning a roulette wheel. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, I did get one bit of information about that from a producer at Dances with Film Festival, one of the panel discussions, who said anytime he gets a query letter like that from a blast service, uh, he deletes it automatically without even looking at it. Uh, and the other producers on the panel agreed with him. Uh, their feeling is, you know, it's all about networking and making personal connections. If we know who you are, you've met us somewhere, an event like this, shaking our hand, giving us a business card, a couple of weeks later, you send us uh, something we're more likely to take a look at it. If it comes from a blast service, it's an automatic reject. So, use the uh, blast query services at your own discretion. Uh, if you think you might get something out of it, great. Uh, chances are you won't. And you may end up getting emails from people who just want to take more money for it. Anyway, that's all I have for this 291st day of Season 2 of the Screenwriter's Journey. I'll be posting again throughout the week, uh, catching you up on things that have happened, uh, scripts uh, that I've been working on and building up to uh, Pitch Fest, uh, the, the Script Fest that's coming up this weekend to Marriott here in Burbank. And that's what I went to last year. I'll be going to that again this year. And uh, I'll be tweeting live from that event to let you know what's going on. Anyway, that's all I have. I'm William Gilmore for the ScreenwritersJourney.com. Please let me know what's going on in your own life and please keep writing.